Good afternoon, welcome to my next video. It's Ricky TZLLZX. So uh, two reasons for this video. The first one is because the video recorded yesterday had problems and issues with the audio levels. Apparently the audio from the radio was uh, drowning out my voice so no one could hear what I was saying. So hopefully I've fixed that today. And the second one is to give you some hints and tips on how to use FT8 and FT4 using JTDX and WSJTX. It's not a video on how to set these programs up. It's a video to fine tune it just to make sure that you're receiving properly and you're transmitting properly. So let's get to it. <laughs> Okay, so the radio is on 14.074 and we will see we have our waterfall and our radio set up at the top. A lot of the first things people moan about and complain about is that they don't get a waterfall on receive. So they don't get this spread of signals on the top as you can see. What happens is they have the filter set too low. So on your radio, what you need to do is make sure that your filtering is set to the required level. Now, I've just changed the filter on my radio down to 300 hertz, which is a CW filter. And you'll notice that on the top of the waterfall, you're just getting a big blob pop up, which is here. So you're not getting those stations. You're not getting the, the correct spread of radio stations on the waterfall so what you need to do if you're getting this you go to your filter settings whichever radio you've got and take your filter levels up you'll notice you'll get a spread between zero and just over three thousand of all those stations uh, and we come down to jtdx or wsjtx you'll see that these stations are now getting decoded correctly and you can see them on the waterfall at the correct spread so check your filtering guys and make sure that they're correct. Okay, the next thing we want to do is when we come to transmit, we don't want to be transmitting any wired signals out. So we're we checking that our ALC levels are correct. Now you'll see that the radio is set up in ALC mode on my second meter. So if I go into transmit mode now and I tune, that ALC level shouldn't really move. So we're now transmitting and the ALC level stays the same. Okay. The, 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 how we change that is if I go to uh, my main settings, my audio, go to your volume mixer, this setting here on the top, you notice mine's set on 13. If you keep an eye on the ALC level, if I go to transmit again, and I'm transmitting the signal out, if I increase that, you'll notice the ALC level goes up, spikes up. We need that to be as low as possible, but still transmitting the power out. Now, mine is around of 13 usually. So if we keep the ALC levels down, it means your signal is nice and clean, and you won't get any complaints from anyone saying uh, you're transmitting too wide. We've all seen it before on the uh, on the scope, but that signal goes crazy, crazy wide. It's usually down to people overdriving the ALC levels. So keep your ALC down, guys. Next thing we want to do is if I go to my main page, if we notice on the settings. And we go to radio on the settings. This little box here says fake it. Now there's three options for split operation. There's none, rig and fake it. If you're noticing that when you go into transmit mode, especially below say a thousand, which is here somewhere, anywhere between here and here. So I'm transmitting down really low. If I transmit, if you watch the frequency, the frequency will move. So the frequency drops down. And people are saying, well, why is, why is the frequency moving? It's because you've got that 
make it ticked. So we go back to those settings and we click on none. Sorry, we click on none instead of fake it. So move it from sorry, wrong one. Split operation to none and click OK. When we go back to our radio now, and if we transmit and send the tone out, the radio will stay on the same frequency. The reason it does that is if you've got fake it set, what happens if you transmit down on these low frequencies down the bottom end of the scope, it'll send the lower tone out. If you have fake it clicked, what happens is it transmit moves your transmit transmission frequency. So you, the tones stay equal, but it moves the radio frequency down. So basically you're shifting the scope to one side. So if you're transmitting down below here, it said your audio level is going out low and a low tone going out. It will send the same tones going out as if you're transmitting around about 1500. And also if you're transmitting high, it'll bring your tones down as well. So that's why your frequency moves uh, when you're doing that. So if you're having problems or you, you think you've got an issue when the frequency is moving, check that level, check your fake it is not switched on, make sure it's switched to none and you won't have them issues uh, and that will cure that problem for you. Next thing is if we go to file and settings again and we go across to reporting what we could do with doing is setting up your PSK reporter which is this side here. So this basically listens to your station and it will send anything you're receiving to PSK reporter. So then if someone else is transmitting and they want to know where they're transmitting to, if you can hear them, your system sends that data through to PSK reporter. Uh, and that lets everyone know uh, who can hear who and if the signals are getting out or not. Uh, notifications is a good one as well. If you notice on my screen, I've got some colours set up on this screen here. In notifications, you can set up your colours to know what these stations are. So the stations on here, on mine, if they're on like a, a brownie colour, it means I've worked them before, but on a different band. If they're clear in white, usually means I've already worked them before on the same band. And if they're blue on mine, they're either calling CQ or they are a brand new station which I've not worked on that band. So if you set your notification colours up to whatever you wish them to be in this part of it, it'll give you an idea on here who you've worked before who you haven't worked before and who you need so basically if a new country comes up for me it pops up on my screen as being bright red i know then that that's a station that i need as a new country for the all-time new one if it comes up on pink it's a new country for the new for this band so it's a slot that i'm looking for so set up your notifications to give you this information so you know who you're working and who you're not working. Next thing is, if you notice this part here, this TX and RX split button. Right, I always have mine set so it's split. Now the reason for that is, if I look on my waterfall, I don't really want to be transmitting over the top of anybody else. Which is another thing, is let this waterfall cycle a few times before you transmit if you're calling cq or you want to call someone else when this is set in split if you find a clear stream say here and you right click you know you're going to be transmitting in this section here so you know when you transmit doesn't matter where the other station is they could be over here somewhere you're transmitting on a clear frequency if you have this TXRX unclicked. When you click on one of these stations, you will be moving to his frequency uh, and then you'll be transmitting 
when he's not transmitting, but they could be someone else transmitting underneath of it. So he may not be able to hear you. So if you have this set at split and you choose a clear stream or as clear as you can on your waterfall, say here, when you do transmit, you're still receiving his signal on the waterfall anywhere, but you're transmitting in the clear. A lot of people don't do this. And what will happen is if you don't do it, if you transmit and you, you reply to back to someone who's calling CQ, if your station is set up to carry on calling CQ after you've finished your QSO, you will transmit over the top or underneath of him. And as many times I've called CQ and people have come to me and on my stream when I'm situated on my lock screen, which is in red. And then because they've not got this box ticked and it's not green, they will continue to call CQ over the top of me. So anyone coming back to me, I can't hear them because they're coming back to me on my stream. So it's a good tip to have this TX or X split ticked so you're transmitting on the same frequency all the time the same part of the waterfall all the time and you're not interfering with anybody else if you do find that when you stop transmitting someone's come on the top over the top of you where you're transmitting just move so if someone comes on here now where, where my red bar is uh to keep it clear for myself and to to make it better for everyone else i'll just move i'll just go over here but it's nice and clear and you're staying out the way of everybody else if everyone done that it just makes it a lot simpler so this txrx split is really important also as well finding a clear slot on your your, your waterfall is important as well if you're going to be calling cq there's that many people who don't even use the waterfall they, they just type in on this part here, a transmit frequency, and they have got no idea where they're transmitting. So they could be transmitting in the center here, and they, they, they don't realize that, they don't understand why no one's coming back to them, because basically they're transmitting right over the top of somebody else, and them two stations are going to be mixed. And if that guy's mixed, and he's stronger than you, no one's going to hear you. So if you can do your best to try and find a clear stream, and, and use the waterfall as an advantage for you, you'll find you have better chances of getting contacts going through. So it's uh, it's really important that you find a clear stream before you start transmitting. So again, as in any radio operation, listen, listen, and then listen again, uh, and watch watch what you're doing on the on the waterfall. Try not to transmit over the top of anybody else. Because you're just doing yourself no favours. Uh, and finally, the last little bit is uh, this little box on the bottom. And basically it says skip TX1. Now, if you don't have that ticked, when you go back to someone's CQ, all you will send them is your call sign and your maidenhead locator. So it'll, you, you've got to then add another transmit slot or transmit section onto your over if you have this little box ticked the first thing it'll send back to somebody is a report straight away so uh, for instance if I choose someone uh, let's see who comes up in a second find a clear spot if you're near I choose someone if I choose this Echo Golf 3 you'll notice I'm transmitting and I'm transmitting uh, his report direct to him so he's getting my report straight away without me intervening and without me sending uh, a request for a contact hopefully he comes back to me you'll see he'll send me oh he hasn't come back to me but man will keep on sending yeah, but it's, it's just sending this part which is just a report so we'll give it a second. And you'll also notice this is in brown. So this is, I've not worked this station on this 
bands or mode before, which is 20 meters. I've worked them somewhere else, but not in this mode. So if you notice, I'm still transmitting in the clear and receiving them in the green. He's given 73 out of that station he was working, so hopefully he'll hear me now because I'm transmitting over here. He's transmitting over here. So he should come back to me if he can hear me with a report straight away. If he don't have this box ticked, what you'll do is you'll just send him, again, your call sign with your reference number. I don't think he's transmitting. Uh, with your maidenhead locator. And it means you have to send extra data through where you don't really need it. I'll give him one more go and see if he comes back to me. If not, we'll, uh, we'll just quit it. I don't think he's coming back. I would have seen a signal come up here. So, uh, but you can understand what I mean. Rather than send... No, it's not there. So rather than send uh, this part, which is the call sign, and his call sign, it just barely sends less information through and to still get the QSO to go through. So this little box, again, is important. You don't have to do it, but it just means you can have the QSO and it'll be over and done with quicker and causing less grief, less hassle. So, hopefully that's made things a little bit easier for you. Again, remember uh, your filter levels. Remember your ALC levels, which is important. Uh, remember if your radio is moving frequency, that to tick that fake it in your JTDX or WSJTX, make sure that's set to none. Uh, set your colours up so you can see your colours, so you know who you need to work and who you've worked before. This is always really handy. Uh, your TX and RX split, which is again important. I think it's important because you can keep your transmit frequency clear with your transmitting and you're transmitting over anyone else. And you can still have a QSL. Uh, and remember to try and find somewhere clear on the waterfall before you're transmitting. So listen and watch, listen and watch before you start transmitting at all. So hopefully that's. Uh, a few good tips for you. Uh, fingers crossed you've heard me over the radio and the audio has been a bit better. And uh, look out for my next video. And if you like it, click and subscribe. And uh, we'll do what we can to get some more videos out. Hopefully, anyway, we'll be uh, trying to get set up now for doing some live broadcasting as well on YouTube. I've not done it yet, but I think I'm nearly there now with the settings. So uh, hopefully that'll be the next one to try. 73 for now from Ricky G Zero Ozarex.